हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मीनल ढल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे विल डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल ह्यूमन बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी अ ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम द पेपर ह्यूमन ओरिजिन एंड इवोल्यूशन सो इन दिस मॉड्यूल विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ ह्यूमन बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी will the learn the objective of this module is to understand the progressive evolutionary process this will also include to describe the progression changes that occur in biological dimension of man you will also know about the connecting links that lead to homo sapiens sapiens and you will also know about the understanding of impact of evolution for the biological evolution of man this module covers the importance of diverse human forms and variants so first let us briefly discuss about the evolution what evolution is the early stages of human biological diversity can only be studied by comparative anatomy of fossil and also by comparative biochemistry of present day human apes and other primates the information on the later stages in human evolution are based on the artifacts that include stone tools pottery fire hearth and the fossil of other animals along with the human fossils the human biological diversity can be understand as the gradual process by which the present diversity of plants and animals arose from the earliest and the most primitive organism which is believed to have been continuing for at least the past 3000 million years it is believed that every species was individually created by god in the form in which it exists today and is not capable of undergoing any change this is referred as the theory of special creation the special creation was contradicted by the fossil evidences and genetic studies and the pseudo scientific arguments of creation science cannot stand up to logical examination it was the generally accepted explanation of origin of the origin of life until the advent of darwinism the course of human phylogeny or the human biological evolution like mammals can be followed only from the fossil records though the fossil records are fragmentary the paleoanthropologists have been able to piece them together and draw them an almost complete phylogeny of primates and of modern man homo sapiens sapien lamarck was the first biologist to publish a theory to explain how one species could have evolved into another he suggested that changes in an individual are acquired during its lifetime chiefly by increased use or disuse of organ in response to a need that continues to make itself felt and that these changes are inherited by its offspring thus the long neck and limbs of a giraffe are explained as having evolved by the animal stretching its neck to browse on the foliage of the trees this is also called as inheritance of acquired characteristics but it was not until the publication of darwin's on the origin of species in 1859 that special creation was seriously challenged unlike lamarck darwin proposed a feasible mechanism of for evolution and comparative anatomy and the modern version of darwinism which incorporates discoveries in genetics remains the most acceptable theory of evolution the place of origin of human diversity includes the fossil of pre-human and ancestral human forms which are obtained from the widely diverse regions of africa asia and europe which indicates that man's center of origin was probably in asia and africa 
more precisely human must have been originated from central asia because the oldest known fossil have been obtained from asia china java and india where uh, this shivalik hills were there the number of domesticated animals and plants is maximum in asia a number of migration of animals have occurred in the past from asia asian cultures appear to be the most oldest culture the climatic conditions in asia and nearby places were most conductive or for the human evolution and rich fossil beds are discovered from rift valley in east africa where hominid fossils have been found these areas are old way george lake victoria and lake natrona in tanzania and lake tarkan in kenya now probable time of origin of human diversity the primates are presumed to have started evolving in eocene of tertiary period between 75 and 60 million years ago or living in forests of miocene in late oligocene about 25 to 30 million years ago when these evergreen forests were replaced by drier savanna grasslands some tree dwelling primates returned back to the ground and became ancestors of apes and human thus evolution of man and ape started together from some tree dwelling common ancestors about 25 to 30 million years ago humanization or the achievement of human organization or appearance of genus homo started about 5 million years ago now what is human biological diversity a brief history of human biological diversity will discuss where the french anatomist marcelin bolle presumed that generalized monkey like creature must have been our hominid ancestors but wood jones proposed that it would be easier to derive human from a small tooth generalized tracer like prosimian then explaining the reduction in the size of teeth during the evolution of man from monkey like apes this figure illustrates the evolution of modern homo sapiens sapiens the propleopithecus is a fossil of first known ape obtained from fyum deposits of egypt it was described under the name propleopithecus and it lived from around about 30 to 35 million years ago in oligocene it is represented by the fossil jaws and teeth no doubt more or less ape like these were short statured with monkey like teeth their dental formula is 2 1 their incisor teeth were vertical rather than directed forward and molars has five cusps each swinnerton presumed that the apes have directly evolved from the traziers bypassing the monkeys there are two different concepts of man's oligocene ancestry that propleopithecus directly gave rise to ramapithecus that propleopithecus gave rise to dryopithecus which in turn evolved into apes and human now agitopithecus is the fossil found by e l simon and richard in 1980 from cairo these were similar to propleopithecus pleopithecus are the fossils where which were obtained from fyum deposits of egypt and some other places these forms existed in miocene and pliocene periods these are considered to be the ancestors of gibbons and orangutans another species proconsul its fossils were described by leake in 1930 from east africa near the victoria lake in kenya from miocene deposits its molars had five cusps each their face was prognathous it walked on its four legs 
The another species is Dryopithecus. In early Miocene, about 25 million years ago, there exists a group of apes collectively known as Dryopithecus. D. africanus, formerly known as Proconsul, exhibits close similarity to chimpanzee and is considered to be a common ancestor of man and apes or a direct forerunner of man. Although ape-like, it had arms and legs of the same length and its legs and heels indicate that it must have assumed a semi-erect posture, that is, they were the knuckle walkers. It has large canines and incisors feeding on fruits and leaves, Dryopithecines from India and Europe in Miocene appeared to the ancestors of modern apes. Several members of Dryopithecine have been discovered from Sivalix. Oreopithecines exhibits still more resemblance with man. It has broad basin-like pelvic girdle, man-like teeth and jaws and a short man-like face. It might have walked erect. It lived in a late Miocene and early Pliocene periods. Although so man-like, it is regarded to represent an aberrant branch from the common ancestor of man and ape and its similarities to man have developed on account of parallel evolution. Now next in the row is Ramapithecus. Ramapithecus is known only by few teeth and some fragments of jaw considered to be the earliest man like primates and oldest of man's ancestors which is on the direct line of human evolution. Its fossil has been discovered from Sivalik hills in India and date back to 14 to 15 million years ago in Miocene. Perhaps it walked erect on its hind feet. Moreover, its teeth suggest a diet and life habits very similar to the modern man. Next in the row is Australopithecus. They were fully biopedal hominids with relatively small brain who lived from 4 to 1.5 million years ago. The brain size ranged from 500 to 700 cc of the size of the brain of modern gorilla and these were short statured forms averaging about 4 feet. They walked nearly or completely straight. Their skeleton shows the various adaptations of bipedalism like the vertebral column had a distinct lumbar curve, face was prognathous and a chin was absent, eyebrow ridges projected over the eyes, Teeth were strikingly man-like because the dental arc was smoothly rounded parabola. Canines did not project beyond the level of other teeth and simian gap was absent. Their thighs and hips were well adapted for erect standing, walking and running. Their ankle bones were designed to bear body weight in bipedal locomotion. Their brain capacity ranged from 450 to 600 cc or slightly above. Thus, Australopithecines represented man with an ape brain. The next in the line is Homo habilis. They lived in early Pleistocene about 1.75 to 2 million years ago. It walked fully straight and had a cranial capacity of about 700 to 800 cc its hand were similar to ours and it was starting to develop humanid manual dexterity these were carnivorous and had begun hunting for meat for hunting these had developed the most primitive stone tools these were crude choppers made by removing flakes along one side of the pebble having an irregular cutting edge. They lived in small bands or groups with stable camp sites. Perhaps they showed sexual division of labor and communicated with 
visual signals and simple audible sounds. The fossils of Homo habilis were found at Old Wai by Ma Mary Leake in 1961 and then by Richard Leake in 1972 from the east side of Lake Turkana in Kenya. Homo habilis is now considered to be on direct line to other Homo. Probably Homo habilis and Australopithecus existed together in Africa evolving from Africanus to Robustus to Habilis. The next in the row is Homo erectus. Homo erectus include fossils obtained from diverse sites ranging from Old White George in Africa to Java, Algeria, China, Hungary and Germany. These fossils date back from 800,000 to 300,000 years. Its first fossil was described in 1891 by Dubis from Java and it was named Pithecanthropus erectus meaning ape man that walks erect. But Meyer Ma in 1950 has replaced these names by Homo erectus so that Homo erectus is known as Homo erectus erectus and P. Pekinensis as Homo erectus pekinensis. Homo erectus has skeleton much like ours but more primitive skull. They were hunters and food, food gatherers and they used the stone tools for hunting and butchering of deers, antelopes and even large ferocious animals such as bears, wild oxen and elephants. Their tools included hand axes, chopping tools, flakes, points, cleavers and even scrapers. They had started using bone and wooden tools as well. Signs of organized hunting have been found in Europe. Homo erectus people had also learned the use of fire for cooking purposes for which evidences are available from Hungary and China. Homo erectus have left clear records of a developing culture associated with the oldest or abivillian culture. They were nomads who roamed widely in small groups or extended families. These people had begun to clothe themselves with animal skin and more of them moved into the caves to protect them from the adverse cold conditions. They also used some kind of rudimentary visuals, signals and languages. On the other hand, the Java man or Homo erectus or Pithecanthropus erectus, they were fo the fossils were found in 1891 by Dubis on the bank of Solo River in eastern Java. Its fossils include some teeth, skull cap and femur bone. It occurred in the Pleistocene deposits some 500,000 years to 1.5 million years ago. It has a cranial cavity of about 940 cc which is intermediate between that of Australopithecus and modern man. It was more than 5 feet tall and weighed 70 kg. Its forehead was low and slanting, the face was prognathous, the jaws were very massive with huge teeth, the chin was absent but bony eyebrow ridges present over the eyes were heavy. Their molars were smaller but frontal teeth that is incisors and canines were large and more prominent indicating omnivorous diet. Peking man, on the other hand, which is known as Homo erectus pekinensis or Pithecanthropus pekinensis or Sinanthropus pekinensis. Its fossils were discovered from caves near Peking in 1920 by Davidson Black. Their fossils include numerous skulls, jaws and postcranial bony fragments from the limestone caves near Chocotin. These lived most probably about 1.5 to 500,000 years ago. 
it is very similar to java man with heavy bone eyebrows ridges low slanting forehead and chinless face but their cranial cavity was much larger than java man ranging from 850 to 1200 cc and averaging 1075 cc the last one is or the main one is homo sapien homo erectus were succeeded by early homo sapien which were described under different names as homo neanderthalensis homo heidelbergensis swanso combe man etc but since these appear to be very similar now they are grouped under homo sapiens some transitional forms connecting homo erectus with homo sapiens have been uncovered from europe these are steinheim skull swanscombe skull fontecavid skull erin's dunn skull now steinheim skull it is fairly a complete skull found from steinheim in germany its cranial capacity is estimated to be about 1000 cc and it had puffy eyebrow ridges and a low forehead its face protrudes but is relatively straight tucked in under the brain case the back of the skull was well rounded and the molars were modern but the incisors were rather large swascombe skull this is known from the three bones which form roof and back of the brain case the bones are usually thick its cranial capacity is estimated to be about 1320 cc and in other features it resembled homo sapiens the above two skulls were obtained from the second interglacial period from late middle or early upper pleistocene the third one is fontecavid skull these were discovered from southern france from the third interglacial period the skull bone are unusually thick but the skull lagged heavy eyebrow ridges and cranial capacity even greater than 1400 cc the last one is erringsdon skull it was found from germany and the cranial capacity was 1450 cc the skull had a fairly high forehead but with heavy eyebrow ridges thus it resembled neanderthal man in eyebrow ridges and homo sapiens in forehead these fossils indicate that during the second and third interglacial period there lived an assemblage of people that might have been the ancestor of both neanderthal man and homo sapiens now all of them together with other have been included in the homo sapiens therefore it was it will be wise to call these forms as early homo sapiens following distinct type of homo appeared in due course all of them have become extinct by now except homo sapiens sapiens which have appeared quite late in the evolutionary period the fossils of primitive man were found in europe asia and africa these all differ slightly but exhibit enough similarities to be grouped together as neanderthals the neanderthals include heidelberg man neanderthal man solo man rhodesian man and cro-magnon man heidelberg man known only from a massive lower jaw which was found from heidelberg germany the jaw is large and heavy and lacks a chin teeth are like those of modern man Heidelberg man is regarded as ancestors to Neanderthal man and is believed to be contemporary to Homo erectus. On the other hand, the Neanderthal man existed in the late Pleistocene period and its fossils were found in the Neanderthal Valley in Germany. Previously, it was named as Homo neanderthalensis, but according to the modern concept these are known as homo sapiens neanderthalensis they were thick forehead thick forehead was low and slanting and the eyebrow ridges were heavy 
the jaw was deep with no chin the cranial capacity was about 1450 cc roughly equal to that of modern man but its lower and posterior portions were larger than the upper and anterior parts culturally they were more evolved they show replacement of abivillian tradition by acheulean culture and then by mosterian tradition they used more symmetrical and sharp tools stone tools were finer and made from flakes the intervention of long wooden spear with a sharp stone tip was advancement in hunting neanderthals possessed the knives to butcher the carcasses and used fire for cooking and for warmth they used animal hides for crude clothing they buried their dead bodies they had concept of life and death and followed rituals neanderthals made no progress either in agriculture or in domestications of animal now the solo man the fossils of homo solensis were found on the bank of solo river in java a few miles away from the remains of pithecanthropus and might have been descendant from them solo man had heavy ridges over the eyes and a receding forehead its brain capacity was about 1300 cc it means that solo man was more primitive than neanderthal man rudishian man the fossil of homo rudishianensis were found in the rudishia in the large limestone cave the skull had a cranial capacity of about 1300 cc with receding forehead and heavy eyebrow ridges it might be even more primitive than the java man the another in this is cro-magnon man they were around 180 cm in height which a large skull broad face rounded forehead narrow nose and a prominent chin they lacked eyebrow ridges the cranial capacity was around 1600 cc and these were swift footed cave dwelling forms and are said to be the expert hunters they are conservant with art and could sketch the pictures of their contemporary animals they made tools from finely chipped stone the tools consisted of spear head and arrows and they made ornaments from ivory and decorated their body they knew the use of hide of animals they did not know agriculture and domestication but exhibited some cultural advance and had some religious and burial ceremonies cro-magnon expressed themselves through painting and sculptures at last 12000 years ago they had learned to make paints out of clays animal fats and metal oxides further evolution of man after cro-magnon evolves the evolution of culture rather than the anatomy the techniques of manufacturing stone tools improved with time and the entire period through which man has improved the techniques of constructing instruments starting from stone bits till now have been divided into paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic ages now homo sapiens sapiens comes where the evolution of modern man from cro-magnon is mainly a cultural and technical evolution it has witnessed the advances in the farming techniques domestication of cattle dogs and sheep establishment of towns extraction of metal from one and their use in arrows pottery and even ornaments and jewelry about 3000 bc the first alloy bronze was also prepared the modern man appeared 11 to 10000 years ago in asia near caspian sea from here it migrated in three directions and formed three distinct races these were white or caucasoid race nowadays we don't use the word race we use the word ethnic group 
and these cockroachoid ethnic group they have the white race spread in the west along shores of mediterranean in europe south west asia and north africa second is black or negroid ethnic group this group developed in africa and malaysia and the last one is mongoloid group this group spread in north and east in siberia and china now let's summarize what we have discussed till now the human biological diversity can be understand as the gradual process by which the present diversity of plants and animals arose from the earliest and the most primitive organisms which is believed to have been continuing for at least the past 3000 million years the course of human phylogeny or the human biological evolution like other mammals can be followed only from the fossil records though the fossil records are fragmentary the paleoanthropologists have been able to piece them together and draw them an almost complete phylogeny of primates and of modern man that is homo sapiens sapiens the early stages of human biological diversity can only be studied by comparative anatomy of fossils and also by comparative biochemistry of present day human ape and other primates information on the later stages in human evolution are based on artifacts that include stone tools pottery fire hearth and the fossil of other animals along with the human fossils thank you